You can't believe what all has been going on in the last two and a half weeks, which seem like five. Good morning, everyone. I'm Kay Cottrell, coming to you live from an undisclosed hotel <laughs> in Nashville. I hope everyone is well. The The world is topsy-turvy, and uh, uh, th that's the reason I was trying to think of a good title for this live stream. Because, you know, the, the live stream, the videos and live streams have to live on your channel for a while, and it, it, it the, the moment passes, and you go, well, why did I say that? Why did I call it that? And I was just thinking, making the most of it, making the best of it, you know, a best of a difficult situation. I'm in a difficult situation, and I'm trying to make the best of it. <laughs> so good morning, Lynn. Good morning, Denise. Good morning, Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca, I don't, I don't think you were on the other day when I was saying that I looked at this amazing property of 27 acres with a brick home, you know, from the 1970 or so ranch, little one. Dairy barn, concrete block, da white dairy barn, and two other old, old barns, but still they're barns, 27 acres. And it was just about a hair's breadth from Kentucky, <laughs> just north of, um, I don't know, actually, kind of north, straight north of Cookville, maybe. I'm not sure. I don't know where I was because I, I drove like this for an hour. And I thought, I can't, no, I can't, I can't be off by, off back here by myself. But you know what? It would be an, an, an incredible place. And, and Barefoot Farmer is the one that took me there. Jeff Poppin, the, um, the organic farmer in Tennessee that I interviewed back uh, about three years ago, four years ago, maybe. And uh, he and I have been in touch. He, he put me in touch with this property and a couple of other properties and <clears throat> so he, <laughs> Jeff does not have a smartphone, so he does not have GPS. And, um, you know, he's actually, <laughs> from what I'm reading and hearing lately, he's probably very, very lucky <laughs> because, you, you know, he doesn't have everything watching him every second and, and finding out, you know, sending him advertisements and everything. But we would stop along the roadside and he would open up his map. Remember those days? Does anybody remember those days before GPS changed our lives forever? And we would stop and, and he would get out the map and, and lay it on his little trunk and open it up. And now we're here and we're, mm, it was just amazing. I mean, I remember. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Jack, Daryl, Maddie in Iceland, Gina in North Carolina. Good morning, Jamela in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, Lynn loves maps. <laughs> well, uh, Rebecca, uh, what was it called? The Thomas Guide. The, was it the, called the Thomas Guide? What was the Thomas Guide? Was that LA or was that the, the big one? Anyway, when, you, when I first went to LA, you could not go anywhere without this. It was at least an inch thick map on a spiral binder. And it had every quadrant of Los Angeles and environs, the whole county. And if you got lost, which, hey, it's a big place. And if you're just getting there, you know, I got lost a couple of times and you, you pull out that that map and, and then you find where you are. And but I mean, there's hundreds of pages in this book. And so you find where you are and you and you go, OK, there's that road and you're following to the end of that road and you get to the edge of the paper. Well, you don't turn it go. You don't turn the page like that. And then that road picks up right there, right there on the other side. It's, it's like somewhere else in the book. So it's crazy. Uh, but that's what it was. The, oh, it almost seems like the orange. I, I can't even remember what we called it. It was just ubiquitous. Good morning, uh, Joshua. Good morning, Rick. <laughs> Bong hit. <laughs> oh, that's quite an interesting name, Rick. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's true. That's true, Daryl. 
if we didn't have our smartphones or laptops, we wouldn't be able to do this. So anyway, an update with me um, is uh, there's been a hiccup. If you're following my journey, there's been a hiccup with the property that I, I finally found something that I really liked. I like the whole feeling of it. And, um, but there's some issues with the uh, inspection and big issues. So let's see, hubby worked UPS 32 years. Thomas Brothers. Where was that one seat away from harvest? And remind me your name and where you are. If they can see the atlas. I used to have an atlas. We used to have a globe. I loved those. And I always wanted, my, my father had one. I don't know who wound up with that. I guess my brother wound up with that. But it was a, we had a globe growing up that was, you know, had a little light in it. Oh, that was so cool. You know, that really just, Oh man, that really makes it so interesting. Anyway, a New Jersey Cali Gardner and family. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, so let's just run down the list of disasters that are going on <laughs> in the world. No. Um, uh, yeah. So I was supposed to fly home to Los Angeles tonight. And as you probably know, the state is on fire. Multiple fires burning. Oregon is a uh, I don't even know how this, this is, well, this is the first time in the history of recorded history that Oregon has had this much, this much fire and um, Washington, Oregon, California, all burning. Um, my glove still has East West Germany on it. So may need to update. That's funny. <laughs> Ultimate gardening from Florida. Thank you so much for tuning in. So, uh, yes, well, yes. And I heard that the smoke is moving in a pattern across the country. It's, it's absolutely terrible. And to think that I'm going to fly back into that tonight is, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm losing sleep over that. Meanwhile, I'm losing sleep over the, this house situation. And also, of course, there's my mother, um, and yesterday, uh, the uh, they the CDC, in its inestimable wisdom, uh, changed the testing guidelines from once a week to twice a week for caregivers. And so, the young woman came, and she'd already been tested this week or in the past week. She said, and. She said she didn't want to be tested again in the same week. And so she left. And so there was my mother who ha is completely dependent, uh, completely dependent. Um, and I was sitting in my hotel room trying to do some work and I didn't even know until. So I went over there and, you know, she was and it was her birthday. We were planning to meet there at 11, me and my brother. And um, and uh, I got there. I just, he called me, what my other brother called me and said, get over there. And I rushed over there and she was just a mess. So I had to, uh, I was doing laundry and taking care of her for eight hours yesterday. And every time I think about, you know, and, and other people have written me and said, you should be taking care of your own mother. Well, it's, um, it's exhausting. And I'm sure some of you are actually doing that, uh, taking care of your elderly parents and, um, and, you know, when the world shrinks so much, when you, she has macular degeneration, she can't hear that well. And so there's no watching TV, there's no distractions. And with the virus, all these, uh, all these elderly people are so isolated. And, and I heard from, from a person that I, well, one of my biggest heroes, um, I heard him say, and I won't tell you who it is. <laughs> You'll have to figure it out. Uh, I heard him say in a video night before last that, you know, 20 to 25 times more people will die from the lockdown, from the uh, quarantine, than from the virus itself. Now, just think about that. You know, people not seeking medical help or not being able to get medical help for other issues that they need and the isolation. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's just, 
my mind is so overloaded on all of that stuff today. I'm so, I, I, I would say I'm sorry, but I mean, I think we're all, we're all really feeling it. We have had two fires here up to British Columbia, right near my home. Oh dear, Rick, take care. Uh, and I hope, I hope you're safe. Um, yeah, now you're New Jersey, Cali. Uh, are you in the San Diego area? So maybe I just shouldn't go back today. I'll just, uh, I, I should have canceled my ticket yesterday when I could get the, the money. Um, uh, let's see. Totally covered in smoke. Hey, Lori, we're just talking about all the fires and how it's impacting a lot of different people. Lisa, do you do you have uh, smoke in uh, Nevada? Sister Marcel is is Maryland Tess. Hey, just watch bit. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, back when I did that, a lot of people were making short film. She's talking about my my short film Betty's Treats, which you can find on my channel if you have never seen. Uh, some of my, I have a couple of my short films that I directed and wrote on my channel before I ever started gardening. And that's way down. Um, what, what is, uh, Eric? Let's see. Um, uh, so, uh, what was I going to say? Um, got distracted. Uh, what were we talking about? Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, Betty Streets. Uh, so Betty Street. It, back in the day, you know, if you if you wrote and directed a short film, you had to have, you know, comedy's always better than drama. But but at, you have to have a twist at the end for a short film. So that that film had the twist. And I, and sometimes I'm not sure if people actually get it, what that film's all about, you know. But um, <laughs> hopefully you did. Let's see. Central Valley. Ooh, 45 minutes from the fire. Oh, dear. Oh, Connie is in Los Angeles. Connie, should I fly back tonight? Connie is boots on the ground. Should I fly back tonight or should I wait a week? I don't think the thing is, I don't I don't think it's going to be any better in a week. And I could stay here and maybe see one house, you know, this week that I might or might not like. And then, and then what, you know? Lynn, you're in Los Angeles. Are you okay with the, with the smoke? Hey, Joanne Kuhn from South Carolina. That's true, Cheryl, but I, uh, I was so tired um, that I, I didn't feel like, you know, I could, if I was doing that on a long-term basis, I think I wouldn't be able to give her the care she needs. And she feels, I've asked her repeatedly, and she feels she needs to be in a, quote, hospital setting so that she has the help she needs uh, when she needs it. Uh, we had the smoke and air. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Come back, it's fine. <laughs> oh my gosh, Connie, what do you say? Denise says it's fine. I mean, uh, not Denise. Um, Connie, Lynn says it's fine. Connie, what do you say? Uh, Rick, where have you been? When did you tune in? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, this has been a process for a while. Um, and I have actually have a, a live stream called Follow My Journey because I sold my Los Angeles home, moved into an apartment, which I considered a somewhat temporary measure. I Well, I was hoping at the time I would be able to afford to keep an L.A. apartment and have a place somewhere else. Uh, this is before the virus, before the pandemic, the response to the pandemic, and now the fires, earthquakes, everything else that's going on. 
Um, okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for that um, uh, deleted message there, Jack and Heffy. Um, if it was really bad, I, I don't have my, <laughs> I don't have my, uh, I don't have my mouse. I'm lost. Well, I don't have any air conditioning, Connie, and I hear that it's very hot. I don't have any air conditioning out there. Uh, yes, I am fairly emotional, Lori. <laughs> oh, Rick, don't worry. I really appreciate you joining my channel. I need new people. I need new, lots of new people watching my videos. Uh, Rick, so just to, very briefly, everybody just uh, bear with me for a second so I can let Rick in on the, uh, the deal. As I have been an urban gardener for eight years in Los Angeles and until... March, I had my house, sold the house in February, March, and got out just before the lockdown, got into an apartment, been doing some apartment videos, some uh, container gardening playlists and things like that, uh, while keeping an eye open for buying a piece of property in Tennessee uh, with the money, some of the money that I got from the house, and because Tennessee is my home state. And I have Daryl, <laughs> <laughs> and Denise uh, in the Cook in Putnam County, and they're really pressing me to move there. So I will have uh, instant friends, and I won't have to be in a strange place and, and make, make all new friends. So it's 63 right now in Inglewood. So it's eight in the morning. It's 63. So high 75. Okay. 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 Well, I just feel like I, I need to get back over there because hi, Shasha. Uh, uh, Shasha. I'm just going to call you Shasha. Uh, Shashka, Shasha Kila. Shasha Kila. Uh, and so, I, Rick, I hope that explained it. I, I haven't been able to, during this trip to do any editing. And usually I'm editing while I'm traveling and I've been gone two and a half weeks and I kept saying, you know what, I'm just going to wait till I get back to my apartment and do the editing. I've got the video about the mussels, the freshwater mussels, the amazing freshwater mussels um, that are so important to our ecosystem. And I've got that video to do. And I also shot a video of this wonderful nursery in Illinois and I actually have, <laughs> hold on one second. How I was thinking I was gonna get these on the plane is beyond me. I mean, I wasn't going to, what I was gonna do, this is what I was gonna do. My plan was, to, uh, I bought these from, from this nursery and this nursery is one of a kind, one of a kind nursery in Salem, Illinois. And Nancy, I don't know if Nancy's tuned in yet, but Nancy Sue Lesk, who is a great fan of mine, she took it upon herself to drive an hour North to go to this nursery and support this guy. And I believe, um, I believe Mark Valerie, who's, um, Mallory on, uh, on YouTube. He's a big fan and, uh, he's going to drive down and go there and buy some plants from this guy. Um, but this guy's, he's more of a plant collector than a businessman. <laughs> and he really, um, absolutely loves plants and he focuses on subtropical, let's see, uh, exotics, subtropical exotics in Southern Illinois. Yes, so everything goes into the greenhouse in the winter. <clears throat> he has an enormous banana tree, if you can believe, in southern Illinois. It's like zone six. I don't know. And um, a, a huge elephant ear and a huge, uh, let's see, what other 
hey, salvia. He's got every, all these amazing salvia. He's got the he's got the he's got the original varieties of these plants like lantana that they don't make anymore. They don't sell them anymore because the big box stores don't want leggy plants. They want nice compact little plants that have a very long shelf life. And I talk, we talk about that in the, in the video. So I shot the video there and I said, I said, you have to have, you have to let me buy something to get out of here. So he sold me this, these cannas, and you know, I love cannas. This is, these are Mexican and this is Mexican pink and Mexican yellow or white. I guess it's yellow. Hmm. This one's pink for sure. It's got a pink stem. See? So what I was going to do, I was just sure I was going to buy that house. And I, <laughs> I was going to stick them in the ground. And then before the freeze, I was going to dig them up and um, put them in the greenhouse that I'm going to build. I was going to build. And so I was just at Daryl's, what, day before yesterday. And Daryl, I should have just given them. They were sitting on my car. I should have just handed them to you say, I'm entrusting these to you until I get back to Tennessee, because now what am I going to do? I'm going to take them, risk them, take them all away somehow. I, I don't even know what I'm going to do, but I can't, you know, I have to preserve them. So uh, that's something I have to do. Let's see. Uh, Michael Bainey is here. Uh, Joni is writing me on Facebook. Oh, uh, she took care of her mother after a stroke for three years, 24 hours a day. My, I tell you, my heart goes out to you. Um, oh, thank you so much, Joni. Joni just left me a beautiful message on Facebook and I want to give her a shout out. Joni, my, Miko or Miko doctor. Okay, so let's see. Uh, yes, that means I'm going <laughs> to, I know, I know you did that, Jack. It'll be etched in my mind forever. He took a lemon tree from Florida on the train. Shh, don't tell anybody. Mm. Q, uh, Cumamin is writing from the Philippines. Hello, I love your videos. Keep up the good content. Stay safe. Thank you so much. Mm. Oh my gosh, Happy! that just seems unfair. Happy had to harvest all of his tomatoes because they had a cold snap and he got snow and now it's back up to 80s. It's crazy. Dave mm -hmm. is here from <clears throat> Organic Gardening in North Carolina. Thank you, Rick. I hope so too. Uh, and I appreciate you following my channel. Uh, well, Jack, you love mussels like live, right? You're not talking about you love to eat mussels. These, that's not, okay. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the, the pre preservation of, of a, a number of species of freshwater mussels. Carry on bag. Let's see. <laughs> I'm behind. Fly with house plants. I know I can do it. I would just have to, I would just have to check my suitcase, which would put me in much later tonight. <laughs> hey, Robin Latham, East Tennessee. Um, well, Robin, I don't know. Did you just tune in? So I'm not sure that this thing is going to work out. Uh, uh, so I'm still trying to figure all that out. Let's see. <laughs> uh, Connie says, I missed the beginning. Did. I don't know what the rest of the question was. Uh, let's see. <laughs> no, I know. That's just it, Denise. I, I'm not giving Daryl my cannas. <laughs> Two chatons. I don't think you can bring plants to California. I know, I know. You you're not supposed to two chatons. And where are you where are you located? And what is your actual name first name, please? Uh, I don't recall you tuning in before, so uh, thank you so much for doing it now. And uh, let's see. So 
some people planted those Chinese seeds. Well, that was really dumb. Um, that's like the people that like, you know, decide they want a, uh, a baby Python pet for a pet in Florida. And then they go, Oh my God, when it gets to be like the size they could, it could eat them. They go, Ooh, let me just start, drop this off in some waterway somewhere. <sighs> no thought to, you know, the, the, what, what, what it could happen, but <clears throat> It's not just individual people that 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 use that mode of operation. Uh, I always thought, I always felt like I, I probably would be a terrible business person, you know, if I had a uh, some kind of a manufacturing company because I wouldn't want to manufacture a product that would wind up in the waste stream. Uh, I would want every part of it to be recycled and. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> And uh, it would probably be so expensive, I would, you know, because of that, that I would never get, sell anything. Because, you know, now that we have all these cheap imports, people are just so used to getting everything so cheaply. And it's hard for people to go back and say, I mean, I, you know, I was just in these towns in Illinois, like, you know, this summer and, you know, just factory after factory is closed, store after store is closed. And it's just like, guess who's thriving? Guess who's thriving? Oh yeah, they're thriving. <clears throat> All the really wealthy people are thriving and, and the, the people that aren't wealthy are hurting. Um, let's see, 40s in Maryland, it keeps jumping, Michael. Oh, that's fantastic. Michael has just recently uh, gotten into a new place in Kentucky, in Ashland, I believe. And uh, now do you have a fence around your garden? Because the deer are like, you know, everywhere. Teofane, I haven't heard from you in a while. How are you doing? <clears throat> What's the situation where you are? Let's see. Where are you? Um, if you don't tune in every week, I forget where you are. <laughs> uh, did you pick all those tomatoes yourself, Joshua? That's a lot of work. <clears throat> Permaculture Appalachia. Appalachia. Sorry, <clears throat> I was swallowing. Um, howdy, howdy from the uh, Georgia-Tennessee border. Uh, no, Connie, not yet. <laughs> um, I'm not sure, Joanne. That will be determined today. Yaniris Rosario. Good morning, everyone from Boston. Uh, Yaniris, did you change your last name? I, I know you did, because it was like Una Estacion or something like that. Um, anyway, <clears throat> I think you changed your last name. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> Daryl has been pushing really hard for Putnam County. Good morning, Diana. Uh, well, there are some hiccups with the inspections. So, um, yeah, <clears throat> might not work out. I've got just a little bit of crud here. <clears throat> Dave, really? Dave is on, uh, on the conversation with... Um, about the somebody planted those Chinese seeds and it killed the whole garden. Oh my goodness. Um, well, I was talking about Walmart, uh, Eric, but yeah. Uh, <clears throat> her Jeff Bezos has, has added seven, and I don't think this is a secret, $78 billion of wealth just during the quarantine. Added. That's not... It's added to what he was already. Yeah. Just imagine that. <laughs> right, Clifton? Where are you writing from? And do you have a garden? Um, let's see. Uh, was... Uh, just so I know, was Rick, was JB uh, saying something either um, sexually explicit or, or what, what, 
uh, violent or what? Because I need to report that. Uh, let's see. Right. Yeah, the thing about fencing, uh, well, if you're right in, are you right in town or did you, are you outside of Asheville, uh, Ashland? Um, because, uh, you know, deer have to feel like they can, they have a place to land. So, you know, they'll jump over something that's almost seven feet tall if they can see on the other side and they can see a landing place. <clears throat> Listen to me. I talk like a deer expert. I've never had a deer in my garden. <laughs> this is just from what I've heard. My my friend in Tennessee, out in the country in Tennessee, she she just has a little. Well, you've seen it, Mary. She you've seen it in in the videos I did there, and I think their fence is seven feet tall, but it's kind of a smallish rectangle. So, <clears throat> uh, yeah, deer are a huge huge issue. Southern Ontario, uh, you know, every time you tune in to Yofena, I always think you're in like the, uh, the, uh, uh, some, um, <laughs> central, central part of the world, you know, some really hot place. I don't know why. Uh, I it's very hot, dry summer. Arlene from the Philippines. Mello is here. Thank you so much. Ah, yes, I had it right. And Encarnacion, I had it right. Yeah, okay, thank you. So you must have two identities on Google. Mix is here from Latvia. Welcome, Mix. How are, how are things in Latvia? Thank you. Um, let's see. Veronice Valerio is here from El Paso. What is it like in El Paso? It must be very hot. Um Oh, okay. Clifton is Robin Latham's lesser half. <laughs> You're so modest. Can I call you Cliff? <laughs> uh, we run permac permaculture Appalachia here on the Georgia, Tennessee. I can't wait to come and visit. I really can't. Four acres that we plant hundreds of native. You know, I, I need to come and see you before I even buy a place. That's what I should do. Um, let's see. Ed is here from Arizona, Sierra Vista, Arizona. Uh, let's see. Uh, ah, you grew verbena, lemon verbena, right? That is one of my top beautiful smells in the garden. Wait, am I thinking of lemon verbena? Gosh, you get away from it and you forget. Is lemon verbena that big, beautiful plant that smells so good? Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, does the monarch butterfly make it up to my Ontario, Teofane? And did you have any monarchs? Yes. Okay. So Rebecca, the scientist <laughs> at Food Forest Next Door has clarified the deer thing. You don't need to see my bathing suit laying there. <laughs> uh, she says that you need two four foot fences spaced five feet apart. So you need a lot of space for that, just for your fencing. Um, right. They need a, they need a, they can't just go like boom, Boom. They need a boom, 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 a run. Oh, I didn't know you got those seats from China, Joshua. Let's see. Oh, I absolutely will visit someday. I should come this week. What's What does your garden look like? <laughs> No time like the present. Elizabeth is here from Arizona. What's it like in Arizona right now, Elizabeth? Ah, you're going to school tomorrow. What grade are you in or level or whatever you call it, Mix? I think Mix first joined my channel when he was 13 or something. Have I got you, have I got you straight? Or Aniche, uh, 105? 
Oh, wow. In Boston? Wait, Veronique, where did you say you were? In Boston? No, El Paso. Sorry. Sorry. Somebody here else here is from, uh, no, the... Um, um, sorry. <laughs> Trying to keep everybody straight. How many? Oh, we have 70 people. That's fantastic. Considering all the the turmoil in the world to have 70 people tune in is fantastic. And, but I only have 32 of these, so I don't even have half 69 people. Somebody just got off. So if you could hit that like button or if you're on mobile, get off for a second, hit that like button and let's get that number up. Oh, a couple more people dropped off. Okay. Uh, I I'm going to stop promoting and get back to this. Let's see. Who else is here? Uh, Sister Marcel. Yes, you know, so many people. Um, it, it remind me of your name, Sister Marcel. I know it's not that. Um, but yes, so many people have told me over the years, oh, you'd be so perfect for a certain kind of show on certain kind of whatever. And it's true. I would. <laughs> Uh, to pitch an idea to to television, if there is such a thing called television anymore, um, you know you have to find a producer who has a track record with certain uh, with certain network, and um, you have to pitch the idea to a certain producer or a number of producers, see if somebody likes your idea, and then they take it to the network and they go, well, who's Kay Cottrell? <laughs> well, she has this little garden show on YouTube, you know, blah blah blah. She's done some work. Uh, yeah, so it's. Uh, it's tough. So I would love to do something like that. Oh, that's great. Teofane says they're, they're promoting uh, butterfly and, um, and especially monarch friendly gardens up there. Wait, 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 what are you talking about? Snakes and sun chokes. What did I miss? You know, I've had snakes so much on my mind this week uh, because um, this one, you know, I told you this one property we went to, the, the guy said he had killed three, three copperheads that week with an ax. And I said, you got close enough to a copperhead to hit it in the head with an ax? Okay. Um, I don't even want to think about that. So, uh so my friend uh, Guy, who you've seen in one of the videos with Daryl, uh, he met me to look at the trees on that property. And I was saying, I'm worried about copperheads. He says, oh, well, you don't have any water here. So you don't have to worry. You don't have any water here. And I'm going, I wanted water. I wanted to, that was like my number one thing when I first started the whole looking for a property is I need a water source. Yes, I have rainwater. I could do what uh, Doug and Stacy are doing, collecting rainwater, and they're living off that. But, you know, I just kind of copped out and, and, and decided, you know, after a lot of looking around at stuff that I would have to work so hard to fix up, or it, it, it's impossible to get a builder until next April in Putnam County. So... Um, so what do I do in the meantime? Do I rent something? Do I stay over there? Do, what? What? Who knows what's going to happen after the election? So uh, I've just been so in turmoil trying to figure all this out. And um, this whole snake thing. <laughs> yes, you're nearest. I, I know. I know. I was just trying to say that when I was looking for you. Lanky John. Let's see. Wow. 10th grade, that is most of that. We have 12 grades. Okay. Thank you, Rick. Uh, we have 43 likes and 68 people watching. If we could make that 43 number go higher, that would be awesome. Uh, let's see. You have a sister named Elizabeth. That's very nice. Um, okra. I'm so jealous. Oh, speaking of okra, you know, when I was at um, this. Uh, it's called Ed's Nursery, by the way. If anybody's anywhere near Salem, Illinois, you need to go to see Ed before no October. Excuse me, before October. And you know, even if you don't see anything you want to buy, just make a donation because this this is. I've said this 
so many times that we have to, we have to support our people that know stuff, that know about plants that are preserving uh, uh, like uh, heirloom varieties of things. Anyway, he has a vegetable garden and he had a big bag of okra there for $3, which I bought and ate. <laughs> Lanky John, where are you writing from? I don't remember your name. Tess, ah, I wish I could remember that. Um, Tess, pole beans planted in spring, probably. Wow, that took a long time. That's good. You're going to have beans. <laughs> After you kill the, kill the copperhead last week, uh, uh, Daryl, they, they just outlawed snakes. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jack. That makes me feel so much better. <laughs> oh, I hope not, deadly wound. I hope not. Clifton Hicks, Robin has made friends with a big black snake. Make friends. The snake and make friends are like two not, that's not two, those three words don't go together in the same sentence, Cliff. Sorry. <laughs> oh. Yes, yes, you can make friends with all those turtles that eat all your food and rabbits. <laughs> uh, and there are no venomous things. Ah, Jack just won't stop trying to get me to move to Maryland. Robin, La Nina, weather patterns planned for this. Oh, oh, the East Coast. The East Coaster is excited. Everything negatively impacts California, <laughs> uh, which is why I'm probably going to leave. Let's see. Kodiak Wild is here. Hello. <laughs> um, Lanky John says, hi, everyone. Uh, 40, 48 likes now. Uh, what did you do, Dave? Dave found a copperhead by the back door. <sighs> Who's DW? Wait, who's DW? What did DW say that Daryl is trying to hush? I don't even see DW. DW, write something else. I don't see you. Uh, Scotland. Lanky John is from Scotland. That's fantastic. You know, I usually have another person tuning in from Scotland. I don't think she's here today. Uh, thank you so much for finding my channel, and uh, I hope you'll be uh, a regular, a regular person who tunes in and watches. Um, wow, uh, Teo Fane is asking a question: Has anyone grown dragon head, also known as Moldavian balm? It is a low maintenance annual that bumblebees seem to love. I've never heard of it. Hello, Lynn from Alabama. Uh, are you in northern or southern Alabama? Seems to make quite a difference in terms of your weather. Um, yeah, we're not going to get into all that. Let's see. Diana says, ah, Diana, remind me. You just said where you are, and I've already forgotten. Um, so Diana has spotted copperheads. I'm sure all of our, our wild animals are. Did you know? Did you know? I just want to make everybody kind of aware that cell, cell towers, cell towers that make this event possible, that make these communication devices possible, that they kill like 90% of the frogs within a certain distance of a cell tower. It, cell towers wipe out species of, of, of animals. So we have to, we, we, we really need to think long and hard about, you know, how, just how connected we need, we, we need to be and, uh, and just how much 
it's worth having something download 10 seconds faster. Uh, and, and, and what all kinds of animals um, and people that they impact. Uh, let's see. Wineberry Farm. Uh, I don't know what you're asking, Lanky John. Uh, love your videos. Hi from West Virginia. Wineberry Farm. Thank you so much. Uh, do you have a channel? And are you growing wine? <laughs> I mean, are you growing uh, grapes for wine? I don't know, Kodiak. What is your real name anyway? I'm just curious. <laughs> it's 1046, everybody, and I have so much I am going to have to do. And I'm I'm sorry we haven't had like a focused discussion on anything specific. Um, South Alabama. Okay, Lynn. You know, I was down there in Mobile and uh, in July. <laughs> that was interesting. And did a number of videos down there. So I hope you'll go back to my, if you're tuning in new for, uh, to my channel, I don't I don't know if you are, um, go back and look through my playlists and there's a Southeast Gardens series. I really need to put all my travel videos in one playlist. I have way too many playlists and I know that. I just haven't sat down and really worked on that. Oh, 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 I see. Okay, uh, let's see. Wow, that's amazing. You must not have any cell towers, Jack. <laughs> uh, what, Robin, what are you, um, how did we get off on that topic? I don't know what we, uh, you know, my brother did that and I'm just, I'm just a little, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit weird about that. Um, uh, you know, about doing those, those tests, because then they, then they have your DNA and, and ancestry.com has said that they will, you know, they'll share it with the government and everything. So I, I, <clears throat> I don't know how I feel about all that. I have to leave soon. So, okay, Cheryl, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're um, on top of that, Jack, because it happened before I saw it. Good morning, Trudy in Tennessee. Wait, Trudy in Tennessee? Oh, you're, yeah, you're Trudy in Tennessee. I have Trudy mates in New Jersey, and I got confused there for a second. Where are you, Trudy? Remind us. Mobile. I live two minutes. Can't oh, great. That's great. Um, let's see. Um, let me see if I could just... Uh, Ah, see if I could find that playlist and you could just grab it. I could post it and you could just grab it, Lynn. Um, I, I, you know, I wanted, I, I wanted to, for, for people to see more, uh, to, for more people to see those because it's such a beautiful area and so many good things were happening down there. I don't know. I'm still in touch with Pat, uh, with Pat Smith, who is the person that I, uh, the main person I went to see when I went down there, she's in Mobile. Let's see. Like I said, I have so many. <laughs> okay, here's the playlist. Um, it started in Mobile and it ended with Old Alabama Gardener. So if you know OAG, Old Alabama Gardener, Lynn, I'm sending you, that's the playlist uh, link. And I hope you, uh, I hope you grab that and watch all those videos and share them with your, with your, um, Alabama friends. Yes, Elizabeth, let's just hope that it's just a regular cell tower and not a 5G. Oh, I shouldn't have said that out loud. I'm going to have to bleep that out. Um, good morning from fabulous, fabulous Phoenix. Uh, Wait, Jeremy, 
Jeremy, is this my Jeremy or is this another Jeremy? Is this Jack's Jeremy or is this a new? I'm confused now. Is Son of a Gun 1814, are you Jeremy that belongs to Jack or are you a different Jeremy? Jack meaning Jack Davis, my, my good friend, who's like my adopted daughter. Uh, if all this time that you're, you're that person, I think I've asked this before. I, 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 ho I hope you're a different person because I'm going to be pretty embarrassed. Let's see. Right, Diana. Yeah, that. I mean, it's... I appreciate that, Happy. I don't know what's going on. Oh, you know, I went to Fall Creek Falls and, you know, when I was a kid and it, I don't remember it that well, but, you know, every time you, you go on the freeway on the, well, we call it, the, what do they call it? The interstate, I-40. Every time you go on the interstate, you see the sign for Fall Creek Falls. And I think I should go back and see that. Thank you, Bob. Where are you writing from? Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we've got 52 of these. If we could get that up to 65, that would be fantastic uh, or even higher. Uh, yes, I don't know what's going on. Um, okay, <laughs> that's what I thought, Jeremy. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it is it is it, it is interesting that I have two Jeremys in um, Phoenix. But the the other Jeremy, Jack is his wife is the gardener. Jack, his wife is the gardener, and uh, uh, he does all the um, the welding of these beautiful uh, plant trellises and. Uh, what he called all those things. He makes so many wonderful things. Uh, oh no. Elizabeth. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Elizabeth, you need to contact me. If you're on Facebook, you need to contact me. Um, or just write me an email at my website. We need to connect. Uh, let's see. I thought I did. I thought I did, Jeremy. I sorry. Sorry. I talk a lot. South Georgia. Fantastic, Bob. Do you have a garden? Diana, that's going to happen today, probably, or tomorrow at the latest tomorrow. Um, Maria, um, Jeremy, his big hobby is welding. Jeremy, you know, Jack Davis that I've done so many, uh, videos with Jack. She came to my house twice. I've been to her house many times. She's taken me to all the gardens, a lot of gardeners in Phoenix. Uh, he makes trellises for her garden. He doesn't make them commercially. Sorry. I didn't mean to get you excited. Um, Oh, thank you, Lynn. Uh, yeah, it'd be great to see you uh, because, uh, you know, I'm contemplating leaving. And it's so amazing that I'm really thinking about doing that. But, you know, a person, a person, especially a person who's older who can't just flit about all over the place. <laughs> um, I can't be in two places at one time. I can't be building a garden here building soil here, building a new life here and be maintaining a, a, an expensive apartment back in Santa Monica. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Veronice, that's true. And I'm just so glad that you guys were on it. Okay, Jack, thank you very much, Steve. Uh, oh, Steve, I know. I hope I get to see you when I'm home. Um, Oh, dear. I do hope I get to see you. No, I haven't, Maria. You'll have to go back and listen. Um, it's been a bit of a hiccup with all of that. Um, yeah, well, what's what's been interesting, uh, Jeremy, is that they have found uh, that it's it's a lot. They're finding it it's a lot you know, of course, Jack wants everything perfect and she's, she's making kombucha and she's doing this thing and she's doing that thing. She's trying all these varieties. She's starting everything from scratch back there. So, 
uh, and she's trying to work, you know, her job. So um, we'll see. I want to stop and see her. And if I do, I'll be, I'll be sure to, to let you know. I mean, it is conceivable. It is actually conceivable that I could be there within the next two weeks. So Jeremy, you should really try to contact me. So I have some way to contact you if I do get over there. Okay. Or if you're in touch with her, if you're already in touch with her, then she can call you, but I, I don't have your contact information and I don't want you to leave it right here. Good morning, Christina. I'm just about to get off. Um, I am hanging on. I've, I've got a late checkout at this hotel. I'm supposed to turn my car in at two o'clock. I've got to see my mother and I've got to be at the airport at 530 if I'm flying home. And if I'm not flying home, <laughs> I got to figure out where I'm going to be. Um, don't worry, Maria. I just, I'm just, just so glad that you follow my channel. Uh, oh, oh, interesting. Ah, I mean, yeah, I think that, I think that that's a typical reaction, Dave. I mean, if you're, if you're all of a sudden, you've got a, a snake in, you know, right in front of you. I mean, your reaction is to protect yourself. And, um, and I guess the people that you got flack with would somehow, if they had been presented with a snake right in front of their face, would they have really taken the caution to, to try to relocate it or back away and let it go? I don't know. That's, that's a really hard decision. Bob Lindsay, uh, 20 gallon tubs wicking. Oh, also double Dutch buckets, five gallon Bob auto drip irrigation. Fantastic. Bob, did you say where you are? I might have missed that. Oh, South Georgia. Yeah, you did. Okay. You're not the only one. Didn't somebody else just tune in from South Georgia or the Georgia? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Lena is here. Angie from Piedmont, Alabama. And oh, wow, that's fantastic. And uh, yes, Christina, that's a good point. You know, I, I'm staying in a hotel that actually has a fairly decent little pool out there. You don't smell like chlorine the whole day. And uh, nobody's using it and stuff. But it was raining this morning. I really needed it, too. I really needed it for my head. <clears throat> uh, Lynn, uh, well, I've been talking about this for a while. But, you know, I just mentioned it here and there is that, uh, you know, I'm originally from Tennessee. And my immediate um, sibling, my siblings and their immediate families are all right here. Now, my sons are over there flung out and all that. So I don't know when or how I'll see them, but Walker says that they may not decide to stay in Austin. And so um, they're talking about maybe North Carolina. Is Gina still there? <laughs> um, North Carolina has much higher tax. I pointed out to them than Tennessee. <laughs> Although it kind of balances out because Tennessee has, no income tax, but has a higher sales tax. North Carolina has a higher income tax. North Carolina has one of the highest income taxes. And so, you know, they're still working. So, um, let's see. Maria says, I follow a channel, people that buy chateaus in France. Wouldn't it be nice just to spend a summer in a chateau in France? just before you check out and they get volunteers. They get food and board to help out. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's the thing is I was, you know, there, there really aren't chateaus here. You know, I, I haven't been at all satisfied with uh, finding something I was interested in living in here. 
you know, I find something that has decent acreage, but the house is like, eh, can't get inspired living there. You know, I think what happened must have happened here, you know, because, you know, you have all these building codes in California. So, and of course you have building codes in HOAs and I don't want to live in an HOA because I don't want to be restricted. I don't want anybody to tell me I can't have vegetables in my front yard if I want to grow vegetables in my front yard or, or that I can't have uh, chickens. You know, they, they tell you, you can't have a rooster almost everywhere. So, mm, you know, it's, it's tough because I feel like a lot of these houses, a lot of these houses that I've been looking at are old and they were redone at some point and not, and so you either get one that was redone like 15 years ago and it's still like, bleh, wasn't redone well. And it's like, well, then you need to, you just want to go in and do everything, uh, which I would want to do. I, 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 I have a problem. <laughs> art is, has all, I've always said this. I've said this since I was five years old. Art is my life right now. Gardening is my art, but you still, you still spend more time in your house than you do in your garden. You sleep in it, you cook, you eat, you wash your dishes, you do your laundry, whatever you do all that stuff in your house. And um, you've got to be happy and you got to feel peaceful and, and you got to feel um, somewhat inspired by your surroundings, no matter what size it is. And so uh, I just can't find, this is the first house <laughs> that the yard and everything, and it just, it just looked so nice and, and everything, but it's got, it's got issues like a lot of old houses. Oh, let's see. According to who, Dave? That's ridiculous. Your hand was less than a foot away from a copperhead. Ah, oh. oh, Debbie, unbelievable! And I'm supposed to fly back to that tonight. Did you hear that? And Daryl wants me to wait a week. He's not the only one. But Lyndon, I left Lyndon at home, and. She hasn't had any physical, you know, they say that cats love being alone. They don't. They love being with their owner. And she feels comfortable and confident when I'm around. And she feels frightened and <laughs> when I'm not around. So the woman that's taking care of her is great because she actually does this for a living. She walks dogs. She takes care of people's animals but she lives with dogs. So I have a feeling just that she walks in and, and my cat smells dog and she's like, you know, so for two and a half weeks, it's been that, you know, she hasn't warmed up to her at all. So it's been extremely stressful and I feel guilty. And I feel like I should, I need to get back there and resolve that situation. And, uh, but I'm going into all that bad air, which Lynn says, isn't that bad but I don't have air conditioning. So that means I got to shut all my windows and just have the air cleaners going. <sighs> if I wait a week, it might get cooler and then fires might die down. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to decide in the next hour. <laughs> uh, let's see. Christine Marquez, work away. Work. Well, the thing is, I would have to be able to put up people and feed them. And that would cost a bunch. That would cost me a bunch of money. But I've, wrote, I've, written, I've written that down, Workaway program. And I, I wonder if it's in, in the U.S. also. Love your videos. They're so helpful. And you're such a cool person from Indiana. That's wonderful. What's your name? I certainly can't tell from those little em emoticons. Uh, um, I'm sorry, I'm quiet. I'm just trying seeing if I missed anything.
Right, right. So if you are in a small space, you do you do have to make your the, your your space pleasing and peaceful. And I, I I look at a lot of these houses, and I and I and I I saw this one kitchen. And Daryl and Denise were really pushing me for this house. You know, it had ten acres, and you know, on paper, it it just sounded great. And had the space. It was a brick home. It was well built. But you walk into the kitchen, which is a walk-through kitchen, a galley kitchen, and they got a white stove and a black refri. I know, I know these things are easy to change out, but I mean, still, they're living with a white stove, a black refrigerator, a black dishwasher, a medium gray Formica countertop everywhere blonde wood cabinets everywhere, like, you know, oak, varnished oak, shiny, not oak, um, I'm sorry, um, birch or something, a light, a light wood, and then white paint. And it was just like, you know, your eye is just like, and you don't, maybe you don't even realize this, but I'm, I'm very sensitive that, to all that. And I, and so many, almost 100% of the houses that have been redone, flipped, redone, uh, have this laminate flooring that is very hard on the eyes. It's like it, it pretends to be planks of wood and this one's darker and this one's lighter and this one's darker and this one's lighter. And you walk in and, and, and it's everywhere. It's not just in one room. It's in every room. It's in the hallway. It's in the bathroom. It's in the kitchen. And you, your eye cannot escape that. And 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 you maybe you don't even realize, but that's like a it's, it's almost like a bombardment of noise. And and at the end of the day, you're just like, you know, what has my eye, my eye has had to like compensate all day long to make things pleasing. And yes, these are cosmetic things that could be changed, but. There was one thing that could not be changed, and that is when they added the two-car garage onto the right side of the house, it obscured the two win the windows over the kitchen sink, which you depend on. You depend on some kind of a window in, uh, I don't know if you're in a basement apartment, if you have a window over your sink, Christina, but <clears throat> if I'm buying a house, it's going to have a kitchen sink. It's going to have a sink over the window. It's going to have a window over the sink. Sorry. And uh, this window, I was looking at this picture. I'm going, why, do, why does the outside through these windows look dark when it's light outside? You know, if, it, if, if, if behind the sliding door had been dark, then I would assume they took the pictures at night and it's fine. But no, they took the pictures in the daytime. It's completely light on the sliding door and it's dark behind these windows. And I'm going, why is that? Ah, you're looking into a dark garage. And I'm going, no, that cannot be fixed. So... Anyway, um, I need a good soil house on the right size average. There are new houses that have issues. The idea is the issues manageable or fixable at a reasonable cost. That's exactly it. Your cars are covered in ash and Debbie is in central California, right? Exactly, Christina. <clears throat> so my cat is just very unhappy. And so, uh, all right. It, oh, it's 11.09. I need to get going. Uh, some aspect of, the, thank you. I couldn't think of the word. It's a visual distraction, just like a noise distraction. You know, if you're trying to work and there's, you know, one of those, you know, this construction, you know, when they back up these construction trucks and they have this beep, 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 well, they it seems like they're backing up more than they're going forward when they're doing construction. And it's just like, it's like, it's, it's, it's a form of, it, that's what they say about, you know, when they were torturing people, it's this noise, you know, or light, you know, it's so distracting. Well, there's so many of them that have been. And what's interesting now, Maria, that now that I've been looking at in the same area for at least two, I don't even know how long, two, three months, how long we've been looking, uh, Daryl, 
uh, this one house that we looked at early on, I thought, this is pretty nice, except it had that very distracting flooring all through the house that's still sitting there and that hasn't sold. So I bet they're wishing they had put down a nice hardwood floor. If they'd invested about $5,000 more dollars in that house and put down a nice hardwood floor, I bet that that house would have been sold by now. But we'll, okay, here's the, here's the $24,000 question. There, I think there used to be a show called the $24,000 question way back. <laughs> if I stay a week, I still have to go back, okay? If I stay a week, will the smoke be any better? No, might be worse. Okay, see you, Lori. Say hello to your better half <laughs> or your lesser half. <laughs> okay, everybody, um, if, if, if anybody uh, hasn't hit that like button, please do so on the way out. I really appreciate you tuning in today. And uh, I hope you stay safe and well. And, you know, I appreciate all your prayers. I know a lot of people have been praying for me. $64,000. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. Uh, you're right. That's true, Denise. That's true. By the way, Denise, that house that we're looking at this morning, it's listed three ways. So it's listed with a little bit of property, a larger amount of property. And that larger amount of property is that bigger price. And that bigger price is really too big. Unless I get it for a deal and it's been on the market for a while. So, but I don't want a big house. I got to fix every room. Ugh. The smoke won't be any better, but you wouldn't have breathed it for that week. <laughs> That's a very good point. That's a very good point, Diana. Um, but I was actually thinking about, uh, see you, Teofane. Thank you. Uh, Joshua, you're way too young. It was a TV show way back in the day. Uh, let's see. No smoke won't be. Connie says no smoke. I think you were trying to say won't be better in a week or a month. Is that what you said? So come now, grab my cat, <laughs> grab my, you know, negatives. I was trying to think if I, if I just wanted to make a fast escape, what would I take? Uh, you know, Bob is saying, consider the disease, fungus that you are, annual problems in the area. The North Georgia area is far better to grow in versus South Georgia. Uh-huh. Well, I won't be going to South Georgia. There's no chance of that. But thank you. I, I have, you know, if I didn't want to be closer to my family, Bob, I would consider North Georgia because I, I happen to know it's beautiful. And also Mark, who hasn't tuned in today, I don't think he's tuned in today, uh, just bought a place in North Georgia. And when I saw that property, I said that that's the property that I want to build a house on. Thank you, Lynn. Watch those videos. I know that's what I think, Robin. I know. Uh, Lyndon and art. Yeah. All my art won't fit in my uh, Prius, unfortunately. So I need a truck. That's what I think, Maria. That's what I think. You know, I, I actually saw there is a log house on 11 acres. And it actually, the, the, the actual acres, you know, sometimes you see these properties and it's just like, you think, ugh, what do I do with that? You know, it's all wooded or it's all this or it's all that, or it's just a mess. It's all beat up. The grass is terrible. This actually looked good. And it, and it looked like it had been growing. Uh, they were growing hay and cutting it for hay, um, which usually means, you know, you got pretty good soil because cows are eating that hay. Uh, but uh 
Now the inside of the house, it was like this big logs everywhere. And I just, you just feel like <laughs> these logs are closing in. I think I would have dreams about logs rolling over me. And I don't know, it's crazy. <laughs> oh, I know, Daryl, I know. Blairsville is where? Oh. I'm going to have to look that. Thank you, Diana. Christina, they are doing so many amazing things with tiny houses now. I if if you if you have a uh, a little nest egg and you can get yourself a container and you can get yourself a builder, you can do so many things. And I actually thought about this, you know, and you put that container, if you get a, a little property that has a hillside and you put that container in that hillside and got two, you've got two sides of that container up against the hill, you have a much more uh, temperate uh, environment and they, they, it could be great. I mean, I, I would do, I would do a couple of those if, if I had somebody really clever to build it. it. Right. Maria, right. It has to be, it has to be this one house that had the bad kitchen, you know, it had the big two double doors in the front to walk and you just dump right into the living room and you're like, there's no, uh, it's no, Oh my goodness. Debbie, what is, what is that size? Oh yeah, I know. 1200 square feet would be perfect. Doug said he would build me because <clears throat> you know, Doug and uh, Doug and Stacy is in the milling business now. And he said he would, <clears throat> he would mill the, the, the Missouri Oaks and build me a house, 1,100 square feet with two bedrooms, <clears throat> which I, you know, have a little office area. And I just thought that would be so great. I mean, I love being in their little cabin. It's so perfect. But I got a lot of stuff. And um, that would have, I would have to get rid of it. The piano and all of that mid, mid-century modern furniture. <sighs> Anyway, thank you so much for letting me just worry with you for an hour and a half. <laughs> oh, God. Um, hi, Barbara. I'm just getting off. Uh, uh, Maria, uh, go ahead and send me the links like now. I mean, today, like to my email. It just contact me through my, uh, if you don't have my email address, just contact me through uh, latebloomershow.com forward slash contact uh, because I need all of that information. I can't wait a week for that information. <laughs> the problem is you can't get a builder until next April in Putnam County. Say hi to Andrew. Okay. Thank you, Maria. Okay. God bless you all. Please stay safe. And um, I really appreciate all you, uh, your good wishes. And uh, I hope you stay safe and well. And I hope you tune in very soon to my next live stream. And if I do go home tonight, I'm going to be editing tomorrow and I'll have a video up Tuesday. If I don't go home, then I don't know. <laughs> all right. Take care, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you all. God bless.